So on guys, Ed here from Echo Outdoors. Um, I apologize to some of you guys for taking me a while to get back into this videos. Uh, I've been kind of busy. Kids had a lot of soccer games and stuff like that. And then plus, I've been fighting a pretty nasty cold for about well, the past week and a half. But uh, I think I'm on the up and up now. And I'm, I'm kind of pushing it out. So <clears throat> hopefully, <clears throat> I still got some coughs and stuff. So you guys will have to excuse me. But um, I feel like I'm pretty good enough. I think I can talk clearly enough and stuff now that I can get back into making these videos. So uh, we're back on the, uh, the topic of land navigation. I've gone over uh, a little bit about maps and stuff like that and the, important, the importance of maps and how I think they're very super, 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 super important to have, um, especially if you're going somewhere where it's really big and, um, you know, you don't really know your way around or you haven't been there very many times. So anyway, we're going to talk about something now that <clears throat> has to do with maps. And um, it's important when, you, when you're converting uh, an azimuth from the map to an azimuth on your compass that you're actually going to travel. So uh, let me adjust this camera here and then we'll get you guys. Um, we'll get going on this because quite frankly I've shot this video a couple times. It takes me like 30 minutes to shoot so I'm going to try to shorten it up here. Try to give you a quick rundown of it so it's not so long. Um, you have to excuse the dog in the background too. He's retarded. So that's what we're going to be talking about today is magnetic declination. All right, <clears throat> a lot of people feel intimidated by magnetic declination. Um, they don't know what it is. It sounds really complicated and something that's really crazy and it's hard to figure out, but it's really not. And I'm going to try to do my best to explain it to you guys um, so that it's easy to understand. Okay, so magnetic declination. First of all, what is magnetic declination? Magnetic declination is the difference between true north and magnetic north. Okay. Um, for those of you that don't know, um, there are two different norths when you're talking about land navigation. All right. <clears throat> you have what's called, uh, I'll do this. All right, there's the earth. There's the North Pole and the South Pole. And you have what's called true north, which is um, your actual physical North Pole. Um, and then you have what's called magnetic north, which is actually off center. It's not exactly where true north is. Okay. Uh, magnetic north is the point to where all the magnetic field around the earth kind of comes in and out down here. I guess you can call this magnetic south. But it's where all the magnetic energy flows. <clears throat> all right, and that doesn't line up with true north exactly. Uh, I don't know exactly how far off it is. I've heard anything from 500 miles to 1,200 miles difference in the two. So you can see how that would <clears throat> kind of throw you off because, you know, say you want to travel true north. Well, being how your compass is magnetic, your compass always points to magnetic north. Okay, so you see how that could, that could throw you off on your travel, especially if you're going long distances. So what you got to do is you got to be able to compensate for that and to compensate to compensate for that you have to take into account like what we what is called magnetic declination all right <clears throat> another thing to keep in mind too with magnetic north is this it's always moving all right um depending on where at you're at on earth it's moving you know whatever way <clears throat> the reason for that is is the earth's core as most of you know is made up of lava and stuff like that and it's always Churning and burning in there and stuff like that. Well, all the iron ore, <coughs> excuse me, that is in Earth's core is what causes the uh, the magnetic uh, bit. What am I trying to say here? The magnetic charge, I guess you could call it, the magnetic sphere, whatever. But that's what that's what causes this magnetic poles. All right, this magnetic pull of the Earth. And since this isn't a solidly round and perfectly round shape the fact that it's different and then the fact that you know iron ore content is constantly moving around within that oblong shape that kind of makes this whole thing move a little bit all right so it's, it's you know from year to year it's always going to change a little bit so one thing you want to keep in mind when you're talking about magnetic declination is the fact that you want to have an up to up to date 
um, idea what your destination is for that area that you're going to be in or for your area of operations, um, whether it be, you know, close to home or, or somewhere else where you're out where you're going. Okay, so now that we got an idea of what magnetic declination is, um, you know, in relevance to true north and magnetic north, stuff like that, uh, how do you adjust for that, okay? Well, first well, first of all, you got to know what it is for your area, like I said, like I was just saying. Um, and then where are you going to find that information at? Well, one place to find that information at is on your handy-dandy map. All right, you're going to see something that looks like this, Okay. That's your declination diagram. Alright, I'll just draw a bigger version of it here real quick. It'll have something like this, like a star. It'll have a straight line down. It'll have another line over with an MN or something like that. And I have a line here, we'll call it 15 degrees. Alright, then it'll say like some other things like, <clears throat> you know, like 30 minutes or you know, 240 mils. It might say some other stuff there, but uh, <clears throat> generally 99% of the time, people navigating are going to do, uh, going to use degrees. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> so what does this mean here? This means that there's a 15 degree difference between true north and magnetic north. All right. That means if you look true north, like here's the earth. Okay. Here's true north. Magnetic north is going to be, from where you're at, 15 degrees off, all right? And if it's to the right, it's to the east. If it's over here, all right, it's to the west, all right? We'll do it like this. So we'll say it's like... Like that. So if it's on the west, then basically shows if it's on the left side, it's the west side. If it's on the right side, it's east side. All right. <clears throat> That'll show you. Rel it kind of gives you an idea. You know, okay. Well, I'm looking up. I'm looking north. At true north. Well, magnetic north actually this way. So actually, my compass is going to point to here when true north is actually to the left, or you know, depending on where I'm at in the world. You know, if I'm looking at my compass of magnetic north, true north is actually to the right, okay? So again, uh, you're going to find that on a map, if you have a map for your area. Uh, most good maps, topo maps, USGI maps, or uh, not USGI, yeah, United States government issue maps, yeah. Uh, Forest Service maps like this one is. Now, if you notice the date on this one, this one's 1998, so I never used the... Uh, yeah, it was pretty close, but I always looked up. There's another place you can find your uh, magnetic declination for your area, for the area you're going to. You search, uh, just get on the internet, Google um, magnetic declination calculator, I think is what it's called, or, or something like that. I don't remember the exact, it's a whole big long Google website, but you're going to look for a website like that. www.noaa, the NOAA, the weather people. Uh, they have, and like I said, it goes on like calm, blah, 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 blah. All right, but they have a thing there where you can, they got like two boxes. You go over to the right box and you can punch in your zip code. And then, or you can, right here it's got longitude and latitude where you can uh, put in your grid coordinates. Or if you don't know your grid coordinates, you can put in your zip code. Then it'll bring up your grid coordinates. And you click calculate or figure it out or whatever. And it'll actually tell you. What the current magnetic declination is for your area or for where you're going to go okay so like i said that's something you want to you want to look up before you go out and make sure you got the right numbers otherwise you're going to get lost so now folks tell me uh well if your compass goes to magnetic north and if your map and everything is aligned with magnetic north if everything's on the same page then can't do you really have to compensate for this yes you do and i'm going to show you why here um we use orange. Okay, we'll say this is a little, this is an area, you know, I don't know, somewhere. All right. And this is facing true north. Okay. All 
All right, let me put that on the map. Let me see here. All right, we'll say this is a map. And this is oriented to true north, all right? This north is facing the North Pole, and where you need to go. And you're down here. All right, that's you, okay? So if you take a map, and you lay it up, you lay it down on the ground, and you orient it with magnetic north, okay? Your map's going to look something like this. Say you're 15, roughly 15 degrees off, just for example. All right, let's, let's do this. All right. Hopefully you get the idea. All right, because now you've oriented this map, your map, with magnetic north. Okay. And you see how see how that's going to throw you off. I mean, Grant, that's really drastic. Okay, this is I'm just kind of sketching this stuff here to give you an idea. All right, but say there's a uh, there's a lookout tower or a point or something that you want to go to that's right here. Okay, and you're right here. All right, so you realistically just have to travel almost straight north to get to it. Well, if your map is oriented to true north, or to magnetic north, sorry, then you're going to show, you know, that thing being over here, right? And you're still here. Okay. You see how it's just going to kind of throw everything off? So realistically on this map though, you're still going to travel almost mostly north. But a lot of your key terrain features and stuff like that aren't going to match up between the two. Okay. And you're not really going to, um, your, your map that's oriented with magnetic north is not going to, the terrain features and the way the layout of the land is not going to match up with how it really is um, in real time. Okay, I hope you guys understand that. It looks kind of confusing and kind of jacked up. I can see where you would think that, okay, well, um, you know, if I just go mostly north or whatever, you know, it should be about the same. Well, you see, you got to think, though, for, to get from here to here, you want to go physically north. All right, see how that works? In real life, you want to go physically north. All right. If your compass is lined up with magnetic north, and you're here physically, and you, know, and you shoot that azimuth or whatever, you're actually not going to go to that point. You're going to miss it. Alright? I hope that makes sense. Now that I look at it, it looks kind of confusing. It looked good in my head. But anyway, everything's not going to line up with true north. So what you need to do is you need to figure out all this stuff on your, on your, on your map that you've oriented with magnetic north. And then you need to compensate to get you right back to square one so you're facing true north or you're heading in the right direction. Okay, I hope, I'm, I hope everybody's with me here. Like I said, this, this always sounds kind of confusing when you're trying to explain it. But, and I'm probably making it harder than what it really is. I encourage you guys to check out other videos about this because I'm probably not the best teacher when it comes to this. So, okay, so we're going to say... How do you how do you actually figure it out? All right, there's a couple sayings. There's one we use in the army called "lock." Called Lars. Left add, right subtract. Okay, what that means is, you know, you got your, your magnetic, your declination diagram. All right, the difference here, we'll call it 15 degrees. All right, what that means is, um, it's to the right, so we're going to subtract. All right, so say we shoot, um, <coughs> we'll figure out on the map, <coughs> excuse me. 
the azimuth we want to travel is 60 degrees. All right, on the map. So, uh, figure out what it is to compensate for the magnetic declination to get it in real time to, to travel on the compass that points to true north. What you want to do is subtract, all right? It's to the right, so you want to subtract. So you're going to subtract 15, 15 degrees. So then your actual direction of travel is going to be 45 degrees. Okay, I hope that makes sense. I think I confused myself here trying to explain this. It's really that easy. <clears throat> now say, say your magnetic declination is 15 degrees west. All right. 15 degrees west. So now what are you going to do? Since it's to the left, you're going to add. So you want to go 60 degrees. Well, to compensate uh, your your compass um, back to, to true north and, and figure out the direction you really need to go, you're going to add 15 degrees. Okay. Then you're going to travel at 75 degrees. Hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully you guys are keeping up with me here. So basically that's all you got to know. If you don't know what declination is, if you don't understand true north, magnetic north, well you should understand that there's two north, okay? But if you don't understand the whole scientific concept behind it, if you don't understand how it kind of messes you up, just understand that, that you have to account for it, and this is how you account for it, okay? So there's one idea, Lars, left add, right subtract. This letter, so left add, right subtract. So on your little diagram, if it's to the left, you add. If it's to the right, you subtract. All right. And basically, what you're doing is you're just trying to figure out <coughs> um, the difference between the magnetic north and the true north. So there's another system for doing that, for trying to figure that out. Instead of using Lars, there's a saying that you could do. Um, west is best. East is least. Alright. Or I've heard west make it best, east make it least. Okay. It's the same concept. Alright. I just keep using 15 degrees for an example. <clears throat> Sorry, excuse me. All right, so here it is the same. Our declination is 15 degrees east. So east, you're going to make it least, which means you're going to subtract. Okay. So there again, say we're doing 75 degrees on the map. It's to the east, so you're going to subtract it to bring it back. So you actually want to subtract 15 degrees, and you're going to travel at 60 degrees. That's going to be actually what you look at on your compass and travel, all right? And then just as easy to the flip side, if it's to the west, make it best, which is add, okay? So that definition is to the west. Now, if you go on that website, it's not going to show you this. It'll actually tell you, um, you know, your declination for your area is 8 degrees west. Okay, so that way, you, if you do this one, you can kind of, you know, okay, it's to the west. I don't have to sit down and think about it. is it left or right. You know, I guess you could just figure this out left and right. <clears throat> but they'll tell you 8 degrees west, so you know you have to add. All right, you have to add eight degrees to whatever the azimuth is you found out on your map. Okay, any questions? Of course there's not, because I'm explaining this perfectly, right? Yeah, I'm sure there's a lot of questions. All right, I'll try to. Uh, this all made more sense in my head. I hope I'm really not confusing you guys. So, <clears throat> this is all, this. you're only gonna use this 
magnetic declination. When you're going, when you're when you're shooting an azimuth on your map, okay, or you're figuring up an azimuth on your map, and then you want to use it on your compass to travel. All right. If you're out and you have a compass, and you say I want to go to that hilltop over there, but there's a big valley full of trees in my way. So I'm going to lose sight of it, but I want to make sure I'm traveling in the right direction. I'm going to shoot an azimuth to that hill. It's X amount of degrees. You don't have to worry about any of this. And then you just follow that because you just found out physically a line that you can follow from where you're at to what you can see. So just go by what your compass tells you. Because if you're doing that, you're only using the compass. I didn't even spell that right. Wow. Ass. I'm an ass. Um, but at that point in time, you're just basically using a compass to follow a straight line. Okay. So it doesn't matter. You ain't got to figure out anything because you know, from you to that, that straight line is what I shoot on my compass. So you don't have to figure that out. This is just going from map to compass. Okay. And, uh, This is going from map to compass if you use a compass to figure out your asthma. Okay. Okay, if you use a protractor, um, you don't have to do this. All right, and I'm gonna explain that more later. Um, I'm going to do a video talking about how to find asthmas on a map, okay? I'm actually going to get a map out, show you guys how to figure out asthmas. If you use the compass to figure out your asthmas, then you want, to, you want to take into consideration the magnetic declination. If you use a protractor to figure out the asthmas, then you don't have to do this, all right? Because if you're using... Yeah, all right, I'm not going to get into that. I'll get into that later. This video is already running on long enough. All right, so that's really about it. Um, I know my head's not right because I've been sick, so I probably totally screwed that all up. Hopefully you guys understand. Things to remember. Magnetic declination. It's the difference between true north and magnetic north, okay? How do you figure that in? You can do the Lars. Do the left add, right subtract method. You can do the Do the west is best method, or the west is best, best, east is least method. Okay, whichever one helps you remember um, how to compensate for that. The other thing to remember is get up to date. Declinations. All right, you don't want to be going off a declination that's 20 years old. Because the chances are it's probably a few degrees off from that by now. So you always want to get an update declination. You understand what de declination is. It's the difference between true north magnetic north. All right. Before you go out and do anything, you want to get an up-to-date up to declination so you're, you're working right with the times. And then just know how to figure out how to adjust from the deck from the azimuth on the map to an azimuth in your hand that you're actually going to follow. Whew. Man. <clears throat> that sucked, didn't it? Like I said, hopefully you guys understood that. Hopefully I didn't butcher it up too bad. Um, like I said, I encourage you guys to check out other videos. Some other guys probably explain it better than I do. I know there's a couple videos out there I watched on it, and I was just like, I have no idea what you're even talking about. So uh, spread the wealth around. Watch a few other videos. Get some more ideas. Do some reading and researching on it. Um, it is something that I think that people should take more seriously. Um, cause like I said, if you got what, how the lay of the land is, then you orient that map to magnetic north. All right. Everything's now off. Okay.
okay? So it's not going to match up. So you got to kind of compensate for that. Depends on where you're at. Like where I'm at in Illinois, our declination is, I think, 1.5 degrees. So if I'm traveling a couple hundred meters, it's not that big a deal. You know, but if I'm traveling a mile or so, you know, then it is a big deal. It's like the bullet theory. You know, if you're off just a little bit here, you're going to be off a lot when you get down here. So that's all I got for magnetic declination. Uh, I'm sure I probably, some of you guys are probably going to have questions. If you have questions or comments or if I explained it stupidly or you have no idea what I was talking about, please feel free to get a hold of me. I'll try it again. Uh, try to make it a little bit easier. Um, again, excuse me for my rough voice, my sniffles and my cough. I've been <clears throat> battling a cold. Um, so more videos to come. Uh, next one I think I'm going to do is like I was talking about shooting the azimuth on a map or figuring up azimuth on a map. That'll be a short one. There's not much to it. And then I'm going to get into uh, compasses and working with compasses. So I hope you guys are enjoying the nice warmer weather. Um, I encourage you to get out there and enjoy Mother Nature. And until next time, we'll see you later.